You're listening to On Regular Radio. The following program is mature content intended for adults only. The views, opinions, and thoughts expressed here are not necessarily those of On Regular Radio, its staff, or its affiliates. Furthermore, do not attempt to recreate any of the situations described as it may prove physically, legally, or financially harmful. And as always, thank you for listening to On Regular Radio. You are listening to the THC Show. Two hotheads on cannabis. With your hosts, Steve Epstein. Not afraid. And Mike Can. You will be. You will be. Regularradio.com. Hi, Mike. Hey, Steve. Welcome to the THC Show. Call us this week, folks. We're at 617-606-4122. And uh, that was Dubbist you just heard on Unregular Radio. Great was, great act we uh, got to walk in on as we came into the studio. Live performance. Live performance. Full band. Oh, sounded awesome. Yeah. Great they band. Did, they did. They sounded I like them. real good. We got some good music coming up on the show. We and, and we already have a phone call. This is right, the second we week in a row call. that this right. has happened. Uh, hello, we have a phone call. Who's on the phone? You're live. On the radio. What's happening, guys? Hey, who's this? This is Bob Rydell. I am the spokesperson for Mother Earth out here in San Diego, California. Oh, wow. <laughs> We're getting into it early, huh? Well, well I just got done. I, I was just on the Weedly News and saw some of the stuff that was said by Donna Lambert and Bresch and, and Wes, and I figured, you know, why don't we get the other side of the story? All right. All right. Um, so your name is Bob. Let's uh, kind of introduce you and, and let people know that haven't been listening maybe last week. Um, Donna Lambert and uh, William West came on, and they were talking about Americans for Safe Access, which is a big group out and, in California. And particularly their representative in San Diego. And they were also talking about this collective, this uh, dispensary called Mother Earth uh, Dispensary, and they had some... Issues about a st- uh, news story, if I'm correct, of um, what was it, the City Reader, City Weekly, or something like that, that uh, had some questions about Mother Earth and their connections to ASA. And uh, this is Bob. Bob, what is your uh, connection with Mother Earth? Say that again. You're the. Well, I actually founded Mother Earth in you- Fallbrook originally, and that's how we started um, until we had to go through the cease and desist program. Um, uh, the county of San Diego came out with an ordinance uh, a year ago, July on where you can relocate a series of maps and uh we've been working hard to uh get that done and actually achieve that goal and what did you think about uh some of the statements that were made by donna obviously you've you've heard it you're calling in um well what let me get some right. the biggest issues clarified here okay yeah so that's number one asa and don duncan have nothing to do with this place nothing um just like there's full disclosure on the uh, uh sheriff side and the county side well that works both ways uh, Craig Bresch is uh, on the board of directors of the Normal that's just reopened down here. Went to their first meeting and actually invited them down. To, you know, they're making all these statements based on facial recognition and and uh, uh, big um, mafioso tactics and scare tactics um, on uh, uh, the, the you know their belief that that's what we're doing. Um, when the truth is, there's three families that are involved in this: the Nager family, the Lachance family, and the Rydell family. They're the only people that have put money into this. The Lachance family comes from a medical background. Uh, the, the, fa- the father of this family uh, ran St. Saint, ran Saint Jude's Medical Center for 35 years in Orange County. Uh, the Nager family uh, comes from a uh, waste disposal side. Um, the, he, Nagers uh, ran Safety Clean in El Cajon for about 22 years. Uh, me, well, I actually used to work for a large tool company I don't really want to say their name because I don't want to get offended, but uh, a company that Craig Bresch used to work at, too. That's where I know Craig. Um, we go uh, way back before any of this, uh, this uh, you know, trying to accomplish this medical need. Um, you know, Craig was laid off. He was a credit manager. He, he was the guy on the phone that call, you, was, he used to call you up and say, fuck you, pay me. That was his job. And uh, I was a regional manager, and he worked for my dealers. Um, the truth is, guys, is there's a lot of uh, fighting between Eugene and uh, and those three people. I don't really care. You know, that's between them. What is your rel- what is your relationship uh, with Eugene and, and ASA? Eugene, I've, Eugene, I know about this much. I've probably been to ten different events uh, in the course of knowing him. One of them, a few of them were comedy shop <laughs> things that they had here in San Diego. A few of them were uh, uh, events like at Kushcon and so on, and. Uh, 
from my perspective, from um, he's an activist out there um, that's extreme, that's trying to get this done. And we need people like that. Uh, the, the fight between Craig and them, I thought, was from Craig running the, the previous normal accusations of uh, uh, people not using money in the right ways and, and fully disclosing that, and that got normal shut down in this area. But, you know, we're in a lawsuit right now against the federal government with normal uh, and Brianna Bill Bray. So I guess if they, if they really thought uh, we were what they said, we, why didn't we jump on Ace's lawsuit? Um, I, I know why we didn't, but, uh, you know, and that's because Ace's lawsuit didn't uh, have a TRO in their lawsuit. Any way of stopping the feds, it was just, uh, you know, a, uh, a perspective of, uh, um, what was it, the Tenth Amendment? You know, and uh, yeah. that, that's just not enough. Bob, um, let me ask you another question. The the part that bothered me personally on, on, on your, you know, dispensary is the news story. And I think you know what I'm talking about with the uh, Absolutely. disclosure. Can you discuss yeah. that too? Can you tell us like Absolutely. your point of view? Absolutely. With- now let's, let's let's look at it from a uh, first of all from a pharmacy point of view. If you go down and you buy a Vicodin, uh, that pharmacist can tell you where it was from. Uh, that pharmacist can even tell you the batch number it came from. So if there's any problem with the medication, they can get to the root. Um, what we got to understand is if we're on the medical side of this, and uh, uh, and and. And believe me, my personal beliefs are, are different, but uh, we're on the medical side. And we've got to maintain standard practices that anybody does. When the sheriffs come down here to do their inspections, they're not saying, show me your patient's names. They're not saying, show me your patient's information. They're saying, are you tracking this way? And if you are, show us. And that's what we do. I mean, you've got to remember, these same sheriffs that regulate us regulate massage parlors, strip bars, uh, pawn shops. They're conditional licensing. Uh, so we're not the only game in town that they got to worry about. Yeah, I, I, um, I mean, I don't have so much an issue with that. My issue is more that it didn't seem like it was clearly disclosed to people who didn't understand what the law was. I mean, to well, me, it you, seems you like know, you're complying with the law, no, but you're not I, explaining I don't what that means. With that. You know, in our membership agreement, we quoted the law that it refers to, and again, that's subject to interpretation on how extreme or how middle of the road you want to take it. I'm just telling you how it really is. Okay. Um, you know, the banding program up north, there are sheriffs that actually go out and physically count your plants and ban them uh, uh, and make sure that you maintain that. Well, we have a thing called a source agreement. And the source agreement, uh, uh, a member cultivator, and that's a term they came, that the county came up with, uh, comes in uh, and wants to donate more than they can consume for their medical needs to help somebody else that can't grow. Uh, um, we have to track where that came from and where that ends up. Um, and that's really for the, the protection of the patient. Um, and just like a piece of candy, yeah, you can't go buy a piece of candy in a store without it being regulated and know where it came from if you're going to sell it to the general public. Um, and, and, you know, it's a, it's a tough thing. Um, we, we, we all know the truth that nobody's ever died from consuming marijuana in 10,000 years of recorded history. To overdose on the drug, you've got to consume 64 times your weight. But on the other side, that soccer mom that doesn't know this industry sees it as a, as a Schedule One drug, it might as well be cyanide. So you got, we, on the medical side here, we got to be middle of the road. We deal with some very large hospitals here locally that are sending us patients directly from their hospital, directly from their oncology centers, um, with lifetime recommendations. Now that's kind of a double-edged sword because a lot of these guys don't have a very long lifetime. Um, but we can't stop because of all this banter and all this these accusations that aren't true, like facial recognition. Geez, I bought my camera system at Fry's Electronics for thirty-five hundred bucks. A facial recognition system is a couple hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, and it's not even a requirement yeah. in the ordinance. Well, let me ask you some yeah. more questions because I like this. We're clearing up a lot of things here, um, Bob. Well, uh, about ASA, would you say that you're very familiar with how it's run and how the organization, the history of it? No, I can't even say that. You know, I know that uh, there are they are a patient advocate group. Um, uh, they mainly focus on patient rights, not co-op rights. Uh, um, uh, other than that, I've seen no harm, to tell you the truth, from no- I've seen no harm coming from Normal, ASA, or uh, any of these other organizations that are, are fairly reputable in this industry. Do you know the if... The infighting do, do, is more about control. The issue I think a lot of us have with ASA, you know, personally, besides, you know, all this other stuff that we're, we're, we've, you know, even kind of touched on the, on the periphery, is that I, I don't I don't know who own like who runs it, what they own, 
It seems like they yeah. they kind of own dispensaries, and we're not sure who's really running the show. Like Mass Can and Normal and these other organizations, they're pretty transparent on who they are, what they are, what they own. You know, right. it's even MPP. Like you know, we can certain activists went after them, but at least we knew the money was coming from Soros and Peter Lewis. You know what I mean? Like we right. knew. It seems like ASA. It's like just Don Duncan. But we don't even know what he owns. We don't even know, and that's my pro- like, you know, they're representing patients. But it, you know, but at the same time, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt because I believe that you could be in this industry, in this, in this business, and have good intentions and trying to do the right thing. So, how does someone like me? How does someone like me filter that through and make a decision on ASA and Don Duncan? How do how do we really know? If any of this stuff, well, any of these accusations are true, that's like how, how can you show us that? Like I know you're you, you yeah, you're I closer I to it. I, you know, I'll be honest with you. I've been in this fight uh, since '07 when I was disabled. Um, uh, they put me on fentanyl and uh, a lot of other drugs. Almost lost my marriage over it. And uh, I went to marijuana as an alternative, just like every other patient that wants to try it. When I saw what it could do, and what I saw what it did for me. And when I saw how the lotions and some of the other products that are coming out with lower THC levels and high CBDs and CBCs, there's no, you, you can't run from the truth. Um, and that's why I got in this fight. And that's why the people that are involved in this fight got in this fight. I mean, these people don't need the money. Uh, one of my partners, Mark Lachance, he's the founder of Premier Jet in Carlsbad. It's a five-star jet center where you can take your toy and, and park it. Uh, they want to leave a mark on this planet. They want to leave a legacy behind for patients that, that, you know, forever. These places are supposed to be built for the community, by the community, and any extra dollars that go beyond taking care of the patients that are in need, go back to the community. So if you want to get rich doing this, go find something else. All right. Well, I appreciate the call. And uh, anything else, you, you know, you probably heard, did you hear the last week's show and the vi- the video at least that we put out from it? Um, yeah, yeah, that's what I was watching. There was a couple things I wanted to comment on. That's what I want to yeah. clarify, um, but I just can't remember. I'm so, uh, you know, I, uh, yeah, wasn't too prepared to call you up. I just thought I should. Yeah, it was the right time, and I uh, appreciate the call, Bob. And if you do want to follow up on this, definitely don't hesitate to give us a call. It's very interesting no hearing it from your, your the other side. Um, Bob, Steve Epstein. Yeah, Steve, my here. attorney here. Uh, Go ahead, attorney Epstein. Uh, my, my question is, uh, but prior to all of the governmental interference in San Diego and environs, uh, how many cooperative dispensaries were there? To my knowledge, there was in, the, in about 160 range is what they published. Now, I've heard the 300... Um, number but i you know that i don't know about underground clubs and all that kind of stuff um so i'm not sure so i'm guessing somewhere in between those two numbers between 100 and 300 correct and now how many are currently operating before the crackdown um there before the crackdown there was the crackdown uh, i'm referring to is the october crackdown uh you're talking about the federal 45 day letter yeah and other crap uh, yeah, no doubt. Huh? Um, uh, I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I've heard of about 35 to 40 co-ops closing down um, through this process so far. Um, you know, the federal government has come with a very unique position on this as far as going directly after landlords and scaring a bunch of people that don't know about this industry. So you're that down just to just rent their property. So right now there's like 35 operating in the county? To the no, best no, of your no, 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 no. I no, think out 35 of the shut down. about 35 to 40 have closed. So how many are now operating? I would still think it's about 100. And here's the other part of it, too. You know, uh, uh, let's go to the referendum for a minute. The county of San Diego did come out with an ordinance. It was restrictive. It would cause co-ops more than likely to have to shut down for about a year to get their facilities up to compliance, and I think that's what the biggest fight was. Uh, and that's what we had to go through. We had to close down for about a year to get this done. Um, if the ordinance would have gone through, the truth is about 15 shops would have been open at the end of the day. About another 10 of them pro- that do qualify because of zoning that didn't want to close down, I imagine one or two of them would have won a lawsuit uh, to stay open uh, while they brought their place up to uh, compliance and probably in a timeline on how that was going to be done. Um, the truth is, is uh, there's 3.5 million people in San Diego. 
let's put it in perspective. Oakland's Harborside has 98,000 members. They, they uh, do, what, 50-some thousand or 50-some million dollars a year, and they have four licenses with 400,000 people. For us to sit here and think that we, we want to be the only ones, first of all, there's no freaking way. There's no way we could take care of the patient. We need a per capita number of 100,000 people uh, is one co-op. So 35 co-ops, at the end of the day, in my opinion, should open up in the whole San Diego area. Um, and that's a real number. Uh, and that's something that's uh, that's controllable, and, and, and I think that's realistic. I think that's sensible. Why 35? Why not 100? Or why not as many as the market will bear? Well, I'm just going off of, 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 of Oakland, the 400,000 people for co-ops. Um, actually, they're going to be issuing two more licenses, but I think that's been putting, put on hold because of the federal action. But even uh, why there? It seems like there's a monopoly excuse, going on. Excuse me. I mean, no. excuse me. All right, go ahead. You, you, wanna, you, talk, you had a long conversation. I know. With I know. I'll Michael. let you go. But I mean, I think this drives to the point that it does seem like regulation leads to monopoly. Go. Well, well, well you don't have to answer that. Yeah, you don't. I'm just making my point. You go ahead, Steve. You got a question. Steve's got a question. Go. Sure. What restrictions does San Diego place upon having a cooperative location? Well, the, the county of San Diego, it's uh, pretty much uh, tracking of the medication and where it goes, uh, tracking the dollars to make I'm, sure that... Yeah, I understand all of that, Let, but let's yeah. talk, let's talk, I've heard the word zoning. Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, how are the restrictions on where your type of business of can San operate? Diego was 600 feet away from everything. Uh, 600 feet away from... Any place children can gather. Any place um, children can gather? Correct, meaning schools, churches... Uh, Etc. Um, in the county, we're a thousand feet away from everything. Six, so six hundred feet. And are there any other zoning restrictions? Um, other than that, no. It's mainly a location. So you could uh, open relative. one in a residential neighborhood. Well, residential is where children they consider where children would gather to at home. Okay. Uh, so yeah, and that's just that. Uh, that was on the floor, uh, uh, but the governor uh, uh, didn't sign the bill or actually turned the bill down about being 600 feet in the city. So you have I mean, to be have, 600 feet away from any residence containing a child? That's Well, in the county, it's 1,000 feet, okay, away from every, any residence. In the city, it was 600 feet. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I'd love to chat more about this at some later date. Uh, could you give us a call back the first Saturday in December? Not a problem. Thanks, Bob. And that was Bob Rydell. Is that right, Rydell? Correct. From Mother Earth Dispensary, he's one of the founders, co-founder. All right, uh, thanks for calling. Keep the good work up. Two guys. weeks. That sounds good. Six one seven six zero six four one two two. We give out the phone number. We get the calls, and usually they're important people. I mean, that uh, that's pretty pretty uh, interesting. That was an interesting conversation. Um, we weren't expecting that. We 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 have a call hopefully coming in from a, another important person. I believe he's the executive director. At, uh, is it Americans for... Let's find out what it is. It's I think it's... Americans for forfeiture reform. Is it civil forfeiture or just forfeiture? It's Americans for forfeiture reform. Yep. Okay. And uh, we like the sounds of that. I know what that's all about. I'm sure Attorney Epstein does too, right, Steve? Yeah, I know a lot about it. So we'll be just talking to him. His name's Epen. And hopefully he'll be calling any second now. And I don't know. Are we going to go back to music or are we going to try to get his call? What are we going to do right now, guys? Well, what we're do you think, expecting Newman? his call yeah. imminently. Yeah, imminently. So should we just wait for it? And I, we, why don't we take a short break? Yeah. All right, we'll hear from DJ Slim. DJ Slim. 